All right, next, uh, next we have Eugene Di Pasquale. Eugene uh, is a state representative from York County, Pennsylvania. He's the father of two. Uh, when you talk about leaders and transparency, he led the fight in Harrisburg to make sure it's more transparent. First in the first in the state to put his expenses online. You know, we would wish that Mitt Romney was a transparent. In fact, we wish he would just stand in front of us every once in a while and talk to everyday people. With no further ado, Eugene Davis Crowley, the next Auditor General of Pennsylvania. Yay! Yay! Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Patrick. And Patrick's right, as the first legislator to put my expenses online, and I have the lowest expenses of any legislator in the state. I always say that it is important to look at what people have actually done more so than what they say they will do. And so Mitt Romney had four years as governor of Massachusetts. Regardless of the campaign talk from the Romney campaign today, let's look at what actually happened in Massachusetts. When he entered office, Massachusetts was ahead of, let me repeat that, ahead of the national average in unemployment and job creation. When he left office, 47th in the nation in job creation and below the national average in unemployment. That is the real Romney record. When he went into office, he said that he wanted to control expenses and hold down debt. When he went into office, though, Massachusetts had one of the lowest debt ratios in the entire country. When he left, they had one of the highest. And what did Massachusetts get in return for that? Below the national average in unemployment, 47th in the nation in job creation, and an increase in the actual size of state government. That is the real Mitt Romney record. And so you ask, if he did that in Massachusetts, that's what he would bring to the United States. Bigger government, less jobs, more debt. That's not what Pennsylvania needs. That's not what the United States needs. We need Barack Obama to keep fighting for the middle class so we can real, get real job creation going here in Pennsylvania and the United States. Let's get out and get this thing done in November. Thank you very much. Yeah. Friends are at the Jersey Shore. When you're at the Jersey Shore, whether it's Cape May or Wild, whatever, you see those planes that go by with the banners. I don't know if you saw that banner, but it says one percent of Americans, oh, 99 percent of men. Um, <laughs> great. So, uh, but we're, we're, you know, I guess we're all working on a ten here anyway, so that's good. Um, Rob McCord is our next speaker. Rob McCord is from our neighboring county, Montgomery County. We are so yeah, proud of, we are so proud of Rob and the job that he has done. He's made our investments here in Pennsylvania really get the bag for his buck statewide, making sure he's protecting our pension funds, protecting working families. He's a great leader, will be reelected as our treasurer here in Pennsylvania. Let's give a hand to Rob McCord. Uh, hot day. Uh, Mo Udall, I hope Kathy Bookfar, I believe Kathy Bookfar is going to make it into Congress. Give her another round. Yeah. 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 One, of, one of my favorite members of Congress, of course, was Patrick Murphy. He has a great future ahead of him. Another favorite was Mo Udall, who used to say everything's been said, but not everybody's had a chance to say it yet. Um, <laughs> let me just repeat what Eugene De Pasquale just uh, underscored there. We'll be so lucky if Eugene uh, gets elected as Auditor General. Right now I'm the only independently elected statewide Democrat, uh, and I think we need a lot of common sense economic policy that we're not getting in Harrisburg right now. I think increasingly people are missing uh, the great Governor Ed Rendell and what he yes. was able to do. Yay! backward-looking government, uh, but I, as the treasurer, my obsession is the economy and the economic security of all Pennsylvanians. Remember what Eugene just highlighted, the promise that candidate Romney is making and is making right now over my shoulder is he's saying we're going to create more jobs, less debt, and smaller government. The problem is that's exactly what he promised when he ran for governor of Massachusetts, and he delivered just the opposite. Tons more debt, more government, and terrible job performance. He literally ranked in the bottom decile, 47th out of 50. Remember that. That's his actual Romney record. And it's also, it's also frightening 
to take a look at what can go wrong with the promises you're seeing today it, with, with Governor Romney. What is he actually promising? A repeal of the of the Four more years! 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 To undercut the middle class with a tax cut for the wealthiest among us. We do not want that. We do not want to move backwards with the 1950 Mitt Romney. Let's move forward with President Obama. Thank you all. Next we have one of the greatest governors in the history of Pennsylvania. This guy got things done. This guy got things moving again. He turned. He turned around. God bless you, too, brother. <laughs> Not just as a mayor of Philadelphia, but as governor of Pennsylvania, giving people back to work, making sure he took care of us. Always, always looking forward to middle class. We're pretty thrilled that he was here off the book tour of his new book, A Nation of Wussies. I won't refer to anyone here. <laughs> Let's give your hands for our Governor Ed Rendell. said, yes, we need this to save the economy. It was manifestly unpopular at the time, but Barack Obama had the courage to continue it, and as a result, the economy didn't melt down. Secondly, the auto bailout. The auto bailout was absolutely unpopular by everybody. But Barack Obama knew if we were going to get manufacturing going again in this country, he had to approve the auto bailout, and he did, and as a result, we have 500,000 manufacturing jobs that were created in the last three months. The best period of manufacturing growth since 1995. Since 1995. Barack Obama put an economic stimulus plan together, and the Congressional Budget Office has said save somewhere between 1 and 2% of the people in this country. That translates to 3 million jobs. That's the price we say. Now, Given that record, why is the president having trouble today in winning the election? It's because the Republicans have done a very good job. And as a politician, I admire the job they've done in spinning and misleading the American public. Let's talk about, number one, bad economic news. Governor Romney goes all around the country saying the economy's in the tank. The economy stinks. It's because well, it the governor, it the it governor of, uh, of Iowa, right the governor of Iowa, a Republican by the name of Terry Branstad yesterday called on Governor Romney to stop saying that the Iowa economy is bad because he says the Iowa economy has recovered. The governor of Wisconsin, Scott Walker, says the Wisconsin, says the Wisconsin economy is doing well. The governor of Ohio says a Republican says the Ohio economy is doing well. The governor of Florida, Rick Scott, says the Florida economy has recovered. So how come all these Republican governors are saying that their economies have recovered and Governor Romney says the economies have tanked? It would be nice to ask him about why those Republican governors are contradicting what he says. Yep. Secondly, we've got the fact that Barack Obama is a big spender. You hear this all, he spent us into big, he spent us into this, he spent us into that. Fact. The fact is that every modern day Republican president has increased the growth of spending more than Barack Obama has. Let me repeat that. Hey. Every Republican president has increased the rate of spending, the rate of spending more than 
Barack Obama. Now, when George Bush, the first George Bush, the second George Bush, when Ronald Reagan, all were faced with a recession, what did they do? They increased government spending, and it helped them get out of the recession. And you can look that up as well. Next, you hear that Obamacare is responsible for creating this recession. Well, Obamacare hasn't even come into law. It doesn't come into law until 2014. The only provisions that are in law are the insurance reforms. But even better still, you hear that the Obamacare is going to kill small business. Well, does anybody remember that in Obamacare, there's a 35% tax credit for small businesses who give health care to their employees. A 35% tax credit. Next, taxes. You hear that President Obama has raised our taxes through the roof. In fact, the average working family in America has had their taxes reduced by $3,600. Yay! Yay! Six hundred and small businesses have received 18 separate and distinct tax cuts under Barack Obama. Next, is misleading fact is regulations. To hear the Republicans speak, President Obama has created all these new regulations that are choking off business. Let the facts show that he has reforms out, 500 different reforms of regulation, and let the facts show he has created less new regulations than George W. Bush has created. Those are facts and those are questions we need to address to Governor Romney. Why are Republicans misleading the public about spending, about taxes, about health care, about regulations, about the economy itself? Well, then we should ask Governor Romney why his proposal is going to work. Why his proposal that cuts taxes by $5 trillion. It would blow the deficit by $5 trillion. And he has not told us how, in any way, shape, or form, we're going to make up for that or make up for the deficit that's in effect now, except other, other than saying it'll be growth. Growth will take care of it. And when you tax the rich, you're taxing job creators, and that kills jobs. Now, this Governor Romney, I'd like you to ask him, Madam President, does he have a short memory? Bill Clinton, in 1993, his first year as president, in his first budget, raised taxes on the top 2% of American wage earners. And the Republicans cried, this will bring us to a Great Depression and recession is going to be horrible. You can't ta raise taxes on the job creators. What happened immediately after the Clinton budget went into effect? 23 and a half million new jobs were created. 23 five of the worst years of job creation in the last six decades. And there is no correlation in the taxes that are paid by the wealthiest Americans and job creation. No matter what the Republicans tell you, you can ask Governor Romney this. Ask him why in the six, last 60 years, since 1950, actually 68, the 10 best years of job creation occurred with the marginal tax rate, the highest marginal tax rate was 50, 60, or 70 percent. And the worst four years occurred when the marginal tax rate was in the 30s. There is no correlation between the rate of taxes and job creation. It is plain and simple as that. And those are facts. Those aren't opinions. And as Casey Stangle, the great manager of New York Yankees, said, you can look them up. For everything I said, you can look them up. Those are facts. There are facts about spending, facts about taxes, facts about what happens when you cut taxes on the wealthy to produce growth. Growth does not come. There are two visions for America. There are two visions for America. Governor Romney's and taxes. You have Obamacare, get rid of regulations, and everything's going to be all right. It doesn't happen. It never has. Trickle down. The only thing that trickles down, folks, is pain and job loss. President Obama, invest in our infrastructure. Every expert will tell you, for every $1 billion invested in infrastructure, we create somewhere between 20 to 25,000 new jobs. And they're good jobs, decent paying jobs, that cannot be outsourced. They're jobs working on roads, working on bridges, working on the electrical grid. We need it desperately in this country, and we need to be able to invest in our infrastructure, our physical infrastructure. But we also need to invest in our intellectual infrastructure, education. And we can't win by cutting education funding. The race to the top among all the nations 
workers of the world, it's going to be won by those that have the most skilled and knowledgeable workers. You saw the Exxon, Exxon's running commercials about teachers, very interesting. And you saw Exxon said, we came in 17th among the countries of the world in the caliber of our students on science and math and engineering questions. If that continues, we're going to be a second-rate economic power. We have to invest in education. We have to value our teachers. We have to make sure that we have the right research and development dollars to grow to this country. We used to be the country that invented everything. We used to be the country that innovated everything. We used to be the country that created every new advance for mankind. And as we were doing all those good things, our economy flourished. We will not get out of this economic challenge unless we invest in our own growth. Folks, the Republicans are always talking about business. Well, I want you to think hard, and presidents and members of the press, think hard about any successful American business. Is there any American business that's grown successful that didn't invest in their own growth, that didn't spend money to make money? That you can't name one. Microsoft was three guys, one idea, $2,000. And they kept making money and pouring it right back into research and development until they became one of the world's best companies in the world. We've got to do the same thing. We've got to invest in this country. We've got to go out and make investments that will create jobs and help the challenges of this country. So there's a lot of questions for Governor Lott. We welcome him. He's not a bad man, he's a good man. We welcome him to Pennsylvania. We hope he spends a lot of time here and learns about our problem in Pennsylvania. He learns about the answers, and the answers are to invest in our infrastructure, our schools, our research and development, just what President Obama proposes. So folks, let's get the truth of the matter. Let's make sure everyone's talking about the Barack Obama, it's the real Barack Obama, not this fantasy Barack Obama that does everything wrong, but the Barack Obama who is taking this country out of the worst potential recession we've ever faced since 1929. He deserves to be re-elected. Welcome, Governor Romney, members of the press. Happy to have you asking those questions. And as Patrick says, I doubt he's going to be around the answer. Thank you. Yay!